In this paper, we describe an online workshop in which we explore the ways in which the various personal habits, family practices, and cultural traditions surrounding the consumption and preparation of food that we encapsulated in a set of playful food traditions and child personas can be harnessed towards the development of novel play and culinary experiences. The workshop was originally planned as an in-person event in which we could join the experience the gustatory, olfactory and tactile properties of the food items at hand. However, as a result of the coronavirus pandemic, we converted the workshop into a virtual event in which participants had to convey multi-sensor food experiences and ideas through the limited sight and sound capabilities offered by online platforms such as Zoom and Miro. The shift to an online platform meant that all aspects of the workshop were digitally mediated. That forced participants to use every ounce of their being and their bodies performatively in ways that allowed them to convey both their ideas and the gustatory properties of their foraged food items. And that, as a result, brought about highly animated presentations and discussions. Participants were also more introspective in their description of the food they had foraged, resulting in a highly mnemonic experience and a large number of auto-ethnographic accounts. The loss of peripheral vision in Zoom easily afforded in in-person meetings and the spatial dominance of the current speaker over other participants meant participants sought alternative forms of action when they were the focus of attention leading to novel experiences and observations which would not have occurred otherwise. Discussions and brainstorming were not only more animated and introspective, but also more effective. Participants were aware of Zoom's limitations and were made attuned to other participants and the need to take turns. Thus, thinking out loud was more fully allowed. Furthermore, the shift to an online platform allowed the participation of people who otherwise would not have been able to attend. The use of Miro as a shared whiteboard enabled us to share, organize, and use materials before, during, and after the workshop in ways that were not possible with the physical whiteboards we used in previous workshops. Although we did not plan to engage children in the workshop due to regulatory and logistical constraints, the virtual nature of the workshop meant the setting was distributed among multiple domestic environments, some of which also included children. Thus, three children partially participated in the preparation for the workshop and in the workshop itself, highlighting new opportunities for future work on remote participatory design activities. For more details on the design, methodology and observation from the workshop, please read the paper associated with this video presentation. Thank you.